The Flexbox widget is incredibly versatile, giving you countless ways of combining images, video, text, and buttons into a section of a responsive page. This video is going to show you how to use the widget and get the best out of it. In this example, I am going to recreate this section of my page. This section has four columns, each headed by an image with some text below the image and a button below the text. As you can see when I preview the page, the controls in the Flexbox widget adjust automatically when I reduce the browser width to fit any device the page may be displayed upon. To create this section, I am going to start by adding a responsive page to my site. Next, I am going to drag and drop the Flexbox widget onto the page. As the Flexbox widget is empty, we need to add objects into it. Start by clicking the Add button in the Embedded Objects section of the widget settings. This creates a control which contains objects such as the image, text, and button found in our example. I am going to name my control Music1. I then press Enter to finish. You can rename a control at any time by double clicking on its name in the Embedded Objects section and entering a new name. As I want to include an image, I need to make sure that the object type dropdown is set to Image. Now I am going to scroll down to the Style Text Editor. This has some default text in it that I do not want, so I am going to delete the text and add my own later. Now let's add an image. Scroll down to the Image Settings section and click on the Choose button. Select the image you want to use. The widget will update in the Editor window. Let's now add a button. Scroll down to the Button Settings section and tick the Use Button checkbox. Enter the button text that you want in the field Button Text. Again, the widget will update in the Editor window. I can now change the button properties. For example, I am going to change its background colour and make the text black on mouse hover. I have also changed the font to a Google font, Special Elite, using the Fonts button. Use the Link button to redirect your visitor to another page in your project file or to an external web address when clicking on the button. Next, scroll up to the Control Content section of the Style Text Editor and enter in your own text. With the text still highlighted, use the Style Text Editor tools to change the properties of the text as you want. In my example, I am going to change the horizontal alignment to center. The widget updates in the Editor window. Now scroll up to the Object Sizing options. In this section, I can adjust the width of the control using the default, minimum, and maximum width settings. I am going to set the default and minimum width values at 250 pixels wide so that the control will display properly on mobile devices. I am going to set the maximum width value to 300 so that all four controls will be grouped as I want them on desktop devices. You can set the value higher if you want, or at zero, which will use the full width available on the device the page is being displayed upon. I am going to change the spacing between the controls to 20. This will give the controls enough left and right margin, as well as enough spacing between each control. My last step is to align all objects in the control. In the Control Alignment section, set Vertical Alignment to Middle and Horizontal Alignment to Center. Now that I have finished the control, I can use it as a template for the other three controls I want to add. Scroll up to the Embedded Options section and click on the Duplicate button three times. 
you will now have four controls. Music 1, 2, 3 and 4. Click on Music 2 and change the text in the Style Text Editor. Change the image by choosing a different image using the Choose button in the Image Settings section. Edit the button link as required. Repeat these steps for the Music 3 and Music 4 controls. To move a control to a different place, drag and drop the control name to its new location in the list. With the four controls complete, I am now going to add some display formatting to the widget. At the top of the widget settings, I can add a top and bottom margin to the widget. If I want, I can set a maximum width value for the widget. For example, you may have a very wide display, such as 2500 pixels wide. At that width, the four controls will look too spaced out. I can put in my own limit on how wide I want the widget to stretch using the maximum content width field. For example, I may want it to be only 1600 pixels wide. In my example here, however, I will leave the value at zero. If I want to change the order in which each control wraps as the width of the browser window changes, I can use the Wrap Objects drop down menu and change it to reverse order or no wrap at all. With the Flexbox widget complete, I now want to add a background color to it. Add a background color fill by clicking on the Shape Options tab and then select Color Fill from the Fill Sections drop down menu. When finished, preview the page to test it by adjusting the browser width.